Hello crafty friends, I'm Lien from Studio Kato and I'm so happy to be back with another Halloween video. Today I'm sharing a new release from Spellbinders. I should have a um, release introduction video up as well, sharing all my card ideas with all these new dancing characters. Now first up we have the Dancing Grim. I'm not going to include any cards in this video. I have a whole separate video for him. What I am going to make is four cards with the Dancing Day of the Dead, the boy. And I'm also going to use the Dancing Day of the Dead girl die set as well. I'm going to make four Halloween cards today and I'm going to make some backgrounds that aren't typically Halloween-y. I'm not going to use any uh, real Halloween products for the backgrounds today. I'm just going to show you a fun couple of options that you can use as well. Now I'm first going to show you how I put these characters together and then I'm going to make the backgrounds and then I'm going to quickly put the cards together. Now these characters are interactive and you won't see that until the very end of the video. Now these skulls, they have a couple of uh, different shapes in them that are really tiny and I didn't want to cut those out of colored cardstock. I find that very fussy, so I just kept the white pieces because I do cut um, two layers for most of the main pieces, one in white and one in color. And I kept all of the white pieces, I kept them in place with a piece of tape on the back and then I can just color over them. So for really tiny pieces like the pieces in the skull, I just use my Ohuhu markers for that. Any alcohol marker will do. So I am, once the skull is all assembled, I am going to assemble all the rest. And I did make two of each character. I'm not showing this on screen because it's just the same thing twice, um, but if I were to make these off camera, I would just put the skull together twice right, um, right after each other and then put the shirt together twice and then the head together twice, you know, just maybe do like an assembly line thing. Um, I wanted to show you how to m put these together without adding the confusion of <laughs> making two at once. So yeah. But if you're making as many cards as I did, you might want to think about like making it a little bit more efficient for yourself. So I did cut out all of my pieces before I even started assembling. That always helps. And uh, thinking about your col color scheme beforehand might seem like a waste of time, but it does help a ton in the long run. So for this character, you're supposed to glue uh, the hat, the skull and the shirt and the guitar all together and the legs swing back and forth if you want to. So if you want them to be interactive, you uh, keep them separate. For the girl, you glue the hair and the skull together and then pretty much everything else you also adhere together but you don't adhere it to the skull and the hair so the dress and the arms and everything but the skull and the hair will uh, swing back and forth if you want them to i'm doing the same thing here so i colored all of the tiny tiny pieces with my ohuhu markers and then i can get to assembling and you can see that for the main parts like the hair and the skull and the dress as well even the arms because they're quite flimsy or like really tiny and I wanted them to be sturdy especially because they swing back and forth. I have an additional layer of white cardstock. This makes it sturdier as I mentioned but it also helps because uh, with the dress it has a lot of layers and when you add an additional layer of white cardstock behind them, the added dimension will really help to set the layers of the dress apart and give it more of a dimensional look. It's It just looks a lot better when there's a thicker white cardstock behind it. You can also just double up your colored cardstock if you don't mind um, wasting your colored cardstock like that or if you just like the you don't like the look of white cardstock behind because you can definitely tell that there's a layer of white behind those colored pieces. If you're really looking, you can tell that they're white on the back. Maybe you don't like that look and you just want a full color look. You can absolutely do that. 
Now, what I am missing on this dress, by the way, is a belt. There was a die in this set, and I just couldn't figure out what it was for. Because uh, when we receive these uh, packages from Spellbinders to work with uh, before they're released, very lucky that I get to do that. Um, most of the time, they just come in little plastic bags, and you don't really see the um, finished product. We do get the pictures, so the di digital pictures, but I tend to not look at them while I'm crafting. There was one die in there that I just couldn't figure out, and by now I know that there's a little belt piece. So if you want to add a belt, there is a die for that. I just, <laughs> I just forgot. I didn't know that it was a belt. Now I'm already moving on to the backgrounds. I'm making four backgrounds and like I said, I didn't want them to be traditionally Halloween-y because one, this is for Day of the Dead. It's not for Halloween technically. I'm gonna send them as Halloween cards, but I wanted them to look a little bit different and I also want to show you that you don't have to have a ton of Halloween themed products to make Halloween cards. I love making Halloween cards, but I also know that you can't have products for every single occasion. So you make do with what you have and what most of us have is some ink and ink smushing is perfect for Halloween because it looks a little messy. You could make it look like blood if you want to. <laughs> you can go very far with this. Um, but yeah, I just stuck to some oranges and purplish um, colors here so it does fit the color scheme of Halloween but it also fits the color scheme that I wanted for my characters because the girl is uh, pretty much all orange and the boy is like teal and black mostly so it just fits together it perfectly fits with the Halloween color scheme now to add a little bit more to this and also because when I looked up pictures of Day of the Dead I saw a lot of flowers so I feel like that's a theme um, and I wanted to incorporate tons of florals in my cards today and I used just the flower frenzy 3d embossing folder from spellbinders I ran that through and uh, after I did my ink smushing because you can do it um, the other way around but you're going to get a different look the ink will pool around the embossed areas for example so your flowers will be lighter uh, I didn't want that I wanted a more subtle look uh, in the end I sort of regret that <laughs> so I go in to highlight the flowers with this lunar paste from Simon Hurley. This is available at the Simon at the <laughs> Spellbinder store, so I will leave that linked below as well. I'm just doing this with my fingers, and I'm just adding a little bit of gold to some of the flowers to highlight them. You'll see me add the characters to all of these <laughs> backgrounds right at the very end, and if you want to see how to make the interactive element move, you can um, see that at the end of the video as well. Now I'm going back in with my ink smushing, I'm making a gray background, and you can see that my panels aren't exactly A2 size. The first one wasn't either. Uh, that one was larger because if you put it through a 3D embossing folder, you might end up with like um, shrinking of your cardstock because the 3D embossing folder adds so much dimension in certain places, your cardstock might shrink. Um, so you always want to, it depends a little bit on the cardstock you use, but you always want to uh, cut a piece of cardstock that's slightly larger than you need so you can trim it off if you, um, if it didn't shrink enough or yeah. But for this one, it's a little bit of an odd size because I need some space to do my foiling. I always like to work on larger pieces of cardstock to do my foiling uh, because that way I can, he can adhere everything down. I'm using the pewter hot foil that is a really dark silver or a dark gray foil and I am using the geometric diamond background from Spellbinders. I feel like geometric designs really work with Halloween cards, especially when there's elongated shapes because it feels like it has that like gothic feel, like a gothic church. I love that look for Halloween. So I reach for my geometric backgrounds a lot for Halloween and you can use them all year round, obviously. 
I'm going to foil that with the glimmer system from Spellbinders. I'm just going to let that heat up. And once that's done, I'll roll it through my die cutting machine. And this is the result. A really fun background. The sides still have to be trimmed off. And then I can adhere, adhere my character on top of that. Now what also works perfect for Halloween is better press plates. If you haven't seen it yet, and I will have a video out on this soon, uh, Spellbinders has released a bunch of um, Halloween themed better press plates. But we can't have everything, I know that. So if you already have the better press system and you have maybe a floral background for that, again, perfect for these cards. Just, if you want it to be Halloween themed, just change up your colors. It doesn't have to be like a Halloween themed image. You can make any image Halloween if you add some black splatter or <laughs> if you add some uh, Halloween colors. So for this better press plate, I am using the floral view and it's a background press plate. These are always a little larger than you need them to be. It's sort of like a margin for error. So you just put your better press cotton cardstock. I am using the porcelain, so the white cardstock. Uh, on top of it, you put some loops of craft tape, some um, low tech tape on top of that. You press the platen down and that just adheres your cardstock to the platen uh, without get having the um, adhesive be in the way of the press plate. You ink it up with special ink. Uh, you can use your regular dye inks. I haven't tried that yet, but there are videos out there that show how to do that. Um, I just haven't yet, so I stick to the um, Better Press black ink mostly. It's a really good ink. It works perfectly. It just takes a little time to ink these large plates up because they're very, very detailed and you do want to make sure they're nicely inked up. I am going to watercolor this. The Better Press ink and cardstock are pretty good for watercoloring. They're not perfect. I mean, the ink is. <laughs> Don't worry about the ink smudging. It won't move at all. Um, but the cardstock, you know, I have a whole video on how to best watercolor on the Better Press cardstock, but also if you want to do more involved watercolor techniques, which cardstock would be a better fit maybe if you want to really <laughs> get the most out of your watercoloring for your Better Press plates. For this one, I am working on the Better Press cardstock and I knew that I wouldn't be able to do anything fancy, but also I'm not aiming for anything fancy here. I am just going to plop some color down in the flowers and the leaves and that's it. I'm sticking to the colors of my character. The accent colors for the Girl of the Dead are that sea glassy teal color and uh, the purple as well. And of course there's orange too because her dress is orange. So I'm keeping my painting super super simple. Uh, I'm, I'm not even doing any shading. It's just the background after all. So that's it. I am going to pop the character on top of that later, but for now we're going to move on to my favorite card. And for this you can use any floral die set you have. Like I said, when I googled Day of the Dead I came across tons of floral images. Like a lot of pictures with just so many flowers on them. And I thought I wanted to use that in my cards, so I am going to make an entire background made out of floral dyes. I have the Bee Bold Blooms and the Mini Blooms and Sprigs die set, and I have already cut these out. Um, I cut them ages ago, and they're just sitting on my desk in these tiny Petri dishes, and they're perfect for this. Uh, for this type of thing, just to fill up a background pretty quickly because they're already made. I cut them out of a bunch of <laughs> colors at the start uh, when I just got these die sets and now I can use them over and over again. You can see that I traced the character before I started putting my flowers everywhere just so I could make sure that the character would be perfectly surrounded by flowers. I didn't have to fill up the entire center 
of the card because I knew the character would sit there. But this just makes sure that everything around the character is filled. I'm not going to fill up the entire background. There is going to be some black showing. But um, yeah, this just makes it so it looks like this character is sitting in a bunch of flowers. I laid those out all out on my black cardstock and then I picked them up with a piece of press and seal. And press and seal, especially if you work with a ton of die cuts, is magic. Um, it's perfect to pick up all of those tiny pieces and then you can just adhere them. Right now I'm just putting adhesive on the flowers that are overlapping with other flowers. So uh, you can't really see what I'm doing. But after that, I can put adhesive on everything that's showing and I can put that on my card. So that's what I'm doing here, just putting adhesive everywhere. And once I'm done, I can turn this around, press this on top of my card and all of the flowers will stick to the card base or the card panel instead of the press and seal. Just peel it away carefully because yeah you know it is some sort of adhesive in the press and seal and you don't want to tear your card sack. I now can finally move on to actually turning these into cards. Now I know it's a little bit weird maybe to see me put the characters together and then watch me make a bunch of backgrounds um, but this is how I make a bunch of cards and sometimes you need to know how to be efficient uh, if you want to, like for Christmas cards for example, if you want to send them to every single person in your life, you have to be very, you have to be pretty efficient at making Christmas cards because you need a ton of them. So I find that making all my backgrounds at once is very, very helpful and especially if you stick to a color scheme. Uh, which for holidays like Halloween and Christmas is what we all do most of the time anyway. Now to adhere this character in place, what you want to do if you want to make it interactive is just adhere the head down. Um, the dress or the shoulders are connected to a little circle element and you want to prop or put a piece of dimensional adhesive, so foam tape, in the center of that circle but and a little bit around it, but be careful not to get too close to the circle. And then the ring where the shoulders are adhered to can just swing back and forth around that um, adhesive. I'm going to show you that one more time. So I um, put a piece of uh, craft tape on the face and the body just to connect them and make sure they're not going to move around. I put some dimensional adhesive in the center of that ring and I am going to put more dimensional adhesive uh, around the head just to make sure that it's not going to move. The head shouldn't move, <laughs> all the rest is going to move. I do double up on my foam tape just to make sure there's plenty of space for this to swing and move around freely, but I'm not sure if you have to. Uh, this was pretty dimensional and I am not entirely sure if it was necessary. I like dimensional cards anyway, so it doesn't matter too much for me. Now on these flowers, um, I didn't want it to move because I knew all of those die cuts would probably get in the way at some point and it would catch on the legs and maybe even tear up a flower or something. I just didn't want that. So I'm adhering the full char character down right on top of the flowers. Nothing is going to move, not the legs, even though they should be swinging back and forth. But he still looks like he's dancing in the flowers, I feel. So yeah, tons of Halloween cards. I made four now but I also have two more with the Dancing Grim and they're really fun they might be my favorite cards actually um well the Dancing Boy of the Dead on top of the flowers is probably my favorite the flower background on the black is just so graphic I love it so yeah, I just wanted to show you that you definitely don't need all the Halloween products to make fun Halloween backgrounds. I think you can get very far just with some inking techniques already. But I did give you some ideas with uh, hot foil plates, some better press plates, a 3D embossing folder and your regular old small die cuts. 
So I hope that was helpful. I hope you liked the cards and I hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up on this video. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Which card is your favorite? Don't forget to check out my new release video just to quickly walk you through the new products and uh, everything I used on these cards. Sometimes I feel like that's a... Um, an easier way to see how um, or to see which products I used if you're interested in maybe getting some. You can also find all of the products I used linked in the description below. Uh, they are affiliate links so if you shop through those I do get a small commission from Spellbinders and that just helps me make more videos for you because it justifies the time I put into them honestly. So I hope you like the video. I hope you subscribe so I can see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.